I'd like to welcome everybody to the Public Health Subcommittee meeting today on October 18th. Uh, I'm going to hand this over to Mark. Danica Scott could not be with us, so I'm Gina Kremenko. You see me on social equity all the time, and I've been a part of this meeting, um, just not um, participating. Mark? Thanks, Gina. Uh, yes, we will. Uh, we have several sets of minutes that uh, need to be approved, but we'll wait on that uh, until we have another uh, subcommittee member. And. Um, and we have no public comments uh, from this week to to review. Um, and uh, Julie, I think we should probably save your uh, your discussion of uh, next steps till sure. the more people in the room, don't you think? I think that would be good. Yep. Yeah. And, I was, and, I uh, Remind people that though we haven't received public comments, public comments can be submitted at any time to the Vermont Government um, Cannabis Control Board's website. Uh, and then I just want to take attendance right now. We have Ingrid Donis in attendance. Yep, I'm here. We have Mark Gorman from NACB, Gina Kremengo from NACB. We have Julie from the Vermont Cannabis Control Board and Nelly, and one person from the public. We have two now, two members of Two, great, right. thank you for joining us. Um, we're going to start with the Department of Health, um, the warning language that they would like um, to see on our last subcommittee meeting we have um, agreed that the Department of Health would have oversight um, for public health cannabis sector. Mark? Uh, yes. Um, we should, uh, I think we could take a look at the, uh, uh, what the, uh, our war, you know, the subcommittee's warning language proposal was and then uh, we can take a look at what the uh, what the company, what the uh, Department of Health has has proposed, but uh, you know we're, we we can, we can go we can read through this. It's not a bad idea to refresh everybody. Uh, but so anyway, there's two things: warning language, which has to accompany uh, advertisements and and, uh, and and certain package uh, labels. And uh, then there are warning symbols, which uh, which also do the same thing, but in a, in a more visual way. And I think studies have showed that uh, uh, picture language is actually much more impactful than uh, the written language like this. But here's what we say: This is a, a cannabis product, and it has not been analyzed or approved by the Food and Drug Administration for use by individuals 21 years of age and older or register qualifying patients only. Keep this product away from children and pets. Do not use it pregnant or breastfeeding. And uh, it was thought that putting that in bold was important. Uh, possession or use of this product may carry significant legal penalties in some jurisdictions and under federal law. It may not be transported outside the state of Vermont. The effects of cannabis may be delayed by two hours or more. Cannabis may be habit forming and can impair concentration, coordination, and judgment. Persons 25 years and younger may be more likely to experience harm to the developing brain. Thank you, Mark. Ingrid, how do you feel about this warning language? I think that those are a lot of key elements that your subcommittee has been discussing over the last few months. Yeah, it does feel comprehensive in terms of what we've discussed. Um, I think that this is a cannabis product that's not been analyzed or approved by the FDA is new, but right, that's sort of rather new. We haven't spoken of that, but I think that's good. Um, yeah, it, it is new, but I think Omar might have mentioned something. Yes. Yeah, and when he was speaking, I took that note. <laughs> so it was interesting that this is now the first line of our warning language proposal. So I do, I do like that. 
Um, and I like the additional last sentence, persons 25 years and younger may be more likely um, and relating it to the developing brain. So I think those that's good. Um, you want my opinion. Thank you. And I know that we can't, um, we're not a quorum, but if we were voting on this, would you say yes to this warning label, language? Yeah, I would. And just for my clarification, would this be part of the handout? Is this what goes on the packaging? You know, we've spoken of two different places where warning information would be provided. We're talking about the packaging itself, is that correct? No, this is part of the um, handout. Handout, yeah, okay, very good. Yeah. So you have product packaging in on our next slide. Got it, thank you. Great, thank you, Ingrid. Which then brings us to our product I, package. I think that uh, that paragraph, uh, it's kind of dense, but it's, it, it will show up on, on package labels, it will show up on oh. Uh, probably the lower right hand side of uh, uh, advertisements, print advertisements. Okay, so Ingrid, it, uh, this will show up on the package as well. Yeah. Okay. Are you okay with including all of that on the packaging? I, I am. I mean, I I felt clear through this whole pro you know, process that I'm not, I don't have background in advertising or how best to catch people's attention and what, you know, I agree that all this information is very important for consumers to, to see. And this is something that I would read if I were picking up a package of some edible product with cannabis in it. I don't, but I, I don't know the best way to post factual information so that people see it, but I would be very um, supportive of people seeing this information as as effectively as possible. I think there's an effort here, uh, starting with the first sentence about the Food and Drug Administration to keep this very parallel to uh, other products in the market so that people, you know, it's something that the people are, uh, they're, they expect to receive and it's uh, disabuses anybody about whether this is an approved drug or not. Mm -hmm. It's very, very comprehensive. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess from a practical standpoint, if, if we're open to discussion, something like the effects of cannabis may be delayed by two hours or more um, is is something that i would want to know right away whereas it's not been analyzed or approved by the fda some people might not even know or care about that um, but the, to actually know the practical effects of this you know so if we're from the mob, from the framework of biggest bang for your buck, you know, possibly should those sort of practical things be higher up in the narrative? I just, I'm just putting that out there. I, I think this is great. I just, um, you know, we bolded that this product should be kept away from children and pets and not to be used if pregnant or breastfeeding. Um, I do think that that it could the fact that it's could be delayed in terms of how it affects you is a very another important factor about about it. So I, I think that's a great comment, Ingrid. I would suggest maybe highlighting that, making that in bold as well. The effects of cannabis may be delayed by two hours or more. And that is definitely for edibles. Right. Yeah, Gina, that's, uh, that's exactly what I've been thinking here, which is uh, should that only be applied to uh, edible packaging and, uh, and uh, advertising? Um, I don't remember what I, any discussion really about that. Yeah. Um, 
it, this would be very, very difficult to put on a pre-roll. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if we're going to be simplifying this information or um, I wish the Department of Health was here to really, you know, just that one question, you know, um, because you would need to make a box and then people put the pre-roll into it. Or I think also we can just have them include in it a flyer, you know, so attached to the package just to minimize um, packaging. Um, and sustainability issues that come with that. Ingrid, would you be happy of this just being included as a flyer hand takeaway with um, the pre row? Um, as sorry, if this was included as a flyer, like a handout, yeah, yeah. In, in, instead yeah. of just the 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 pre row itself. I see. Right. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if something's teeny, it's not going to be big enough to put all that writing, but it can go with it in some other way. I just am noting that we don't, we say that it's, um, it can impair concentration, coordination, and judgment, but haven't we previously spoken about impairing operation? Am I not, of a vehicle? Am I not seeing that on here? Or did we? I, it's not on there. I know you have spoken about that in the past. I mean, I know it's sort of obvious, but I just. Um, I, I think that's what they mean by coordination. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I mean, in fairness, you can be arrested for being under the influence of drugs when you're pulled over. Um, if you're driving in an impaired way. So I just, I don't know. I think there, that some people can have confusion around that. Um, but maybe it's clear through this. You know, the material that came back from um, Department's Health has a, like about six bullet points after following this uh, paragraph. And one of them is about uh, operating driving or operating uh, machinery. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure if their intention was just to put that in the flyer or some additional uh, bullet points on the, you know, on the package or on the advertisement. We'll, we'll, we'll ask David for some clarification on that. Yeah, I feel like operating machinery, a reference to that would be helpful. Okay, great. Um, we will wait for the Department of Health to come on today, um, and if not, make those suggestions um, to them and come back to the subcommittee on Thursday. Um, so we're just continuing with the pack, uh, product packaging, that there needs to be the required warnings, and then there's also inclusion of what the font size should be. I know we have spoken about that, you know, so that people are able to read it. Um, what times the Roman, Helix, or Ario and Bolded, you know, keep out of reach of children. And then if a package contains multiple serving, um, it must be stated on the package as well in the same 10 point font. Uh, Ingrid, what do you think about that? Uh, just give me a minute. So it includes multiple service. Yeah, I think that that's very helpful. Morning slides. Mark, would you do you want to take that? Yeah. Um, okay. So the morning, uh, the morning symbols. 
know, and I know a lot of people have kind of wondered about the uh, all the language that we've just read and whether it's too dim. Um, and uh, that's that's all debatable, although it's all good information. One thing that the studies have shown is that uh, uh, visual uh, warning symbols are more impactful when combined with the language. So um, that's why we're, uh, we've spent so much time discussing this. Uh, we've, we've debated back and forth about the color of the, uh, uh, of the, of the signs. And uh, I think everybody agreed that they kind of liked yellow, but uh, they were, you know, if it was not deemed to be as impactful, then uh, we'll go with white. Uh, so that issue was sort of left hanging like that, but everybody indicated that they were okay with the white uh, in the subcommittee. And uh, we'll be interested to see what uh, what the Department of Health has to say about that too. Uh, but it, it, it gives uh, it gives uh, specifications for the for the size on a package uh, label uh, for um, you know with the uh, for the uh, language uh, on an edible marijuana product, and uh, and I think uh, you know I'm, I'm curious to see what the department has to say about that. Ingrid, you were involved in uh, these discussions. Is this tracking with what you felt like we were uh, uh, the conclusions we were coming to? Yes, definitely. Also, I know, and so we see here that the Department of Health would like to include both the white label warning symbol and the yellow. I know that you were a very big fan of having the yellow, just that it stands out more. The reason why you're allowed to choose is just to prevent washing out um, from the color of the packaging. So if this was around a yellow background, you wouldn't really be able to see it. So in cases like that, they would like um, the company to use the white label just so that people will be able to see it. So I think that that is a really good distinction um, because the last thing we don't want something being camouflaged. Um, also with the packaging and label, they wanted um, a half an inch by a half an inch and then at least 25% of the servings height and width, but not less than um, 0.25 by 0.25, uh, so that people are able to see it. And that would definitely help us um, with some smaller packaging. Yeah. Um, so I, I think, you know, these are really sufficient. Um, what, are you, what are your feelings? So if you're asking me, I think that all oh, looks very good. Yeah, I think this was a, a um, very uh, clever uh, way to um, incorporate yeah. the, the views of uh, all the subcommittee members. Uh, so yeah. uh, the, giving some choices, uh, never any harm in doing that. Although they say you can't monkey with the size of the label or the, uh, or the design. Yeah. So Ingrid, um, I was just seeing on the warning language that it does say it is against the law to drive or operate machinery while under the influence of this product. And then they have the National Poison Control Center's number as well. So that, that language will be included. Okay, good. That's right. We did have the poison control yeah. piece as well. So, so just to let you know, that will be included on the warning language. Mm -hmm. And so, it, um, obviously, they have restrictions 
you know, you cannot modify, you know, change this in any way, recreate it. It can't be smaller than the measurements that were indicated. Um, and the color, you know, colors can't be changed, etc. Or, or having a dark background so you can't see anything at all. Um, so I think that that's really important. Yeah. And for now, um, Julie, have you heard from the Department of Health at all? Or, or I have not. Or Dr. Uh, I have not. I have not either. Okay. So that, those are the last things that we really needed to discuss for the subcommittee. I do apologize so much that we do not have a quorum for this section or that our expert from the Department of Health is not with us at this time. Um, do we have any public comments um, that we can, we can take that now? Do we have public comment? Um, maybe, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Yes, I think we do. Okay, great. Also, Gina, if I can just, at, at the end, if I can just add a couple things. So, would you, would you like to do that now before public comments? Yeah, okay. it's nothing big. I just, I, it's really important for Dr. Levine to be here. And, you know, so I'm willing to meet more. You know, I just think his input is really valuable and I'd like, to have both he and Tim be able to weigh in. So whatever is needed for that. Thank you. Thank you, Ingrid, I appreciate that. And yes, um, we will definitely be having a Thursday subcommittee um, meeting if the two do not um, appear before the end of this one. And I will be holding on the line if necessary, just to make sure that there aren't any other people um, of the public come in. Would you like to? Go ahead. Great. I'm Jill Sethoff Garin, and I'm representing the 2,400 members of the Vermont Medical Society, the American Academy of Pediatrics, and the Vermont Psychiatric Association. And I just wanted to say that we are concerned about the timeline. We don't really understand where you're at with the timeline because it's really hard to gauge. Um, we can't always be at the public meetings here. We're not finding all the documents online. So I see this October 20th milestone, and I don't know where you're at necessarily. Um, so as far as we know, you're just working on the warning labels, but one of the things that we're really worried about is the advertising component, and I don't know if you've made those decisions or not. But for us, just advertising actually encompasses much more than just print ads um, or even social media. It's also um, the distribution of the dispensaries themselves and the locations in terms of when this, the evidence shows that um, when youth have a dispensary in an area near schools or near where they are, they'll actually um, see the signs and those signs will then show up in social media and they'll actually, it, it's a branding thing that works in terms of having a perception of reduced harm. And so that's one of our major concerns is that you're looking at advertising in a very um, broad way. It's also the names of things, um, gummies, cookies, things like that, they also um, are attractive to youth. So again, I'm not, it's really hard for me to tell where you're at in adopting um, the, the proposed recommendations, but um, so I just wanted to say that we would urge you to really um, take your time and we don't need to rush this. We really need to get it right because it's Vermonters Health and it's our youth that we're thinking about. Thank you. Thank you. And I can give you a timeline update after this. Great. I'll hope you're great. Thank you. Thank you. Jill, we'll, uh, there are, uh, there's another subcommittee that is considering the uh, 
proximity to schools, and churches, and so forth. Um, yeah, one well, will pass your your views along. I still have nothing from either um, Department of Health or from uh, Tim, so as an update. Inger, do you have any more comments or questions? So just to let you know, um, again, that the driving component will be added to the warning label and warning language. Okay, here we go. Oh, we have Dr. Jean. Yeah, but um, unfortunately, in a car, and we'll be entering the garage, so I'll be in and out. So I'm here. Uh, Dr. Levine, we've, we've kind of, uh, knowing that there was a quorum, uh, we've reviewed the uh, proposal of the uh, Department of Health, and uh, I'm sure there will be questions if. Uh, you know, for you or, or uh, uh, David, uh, if there were more subcommittee members here. <laughs> uh, no, would you need permission to share you, uh, the presentation? You should, you should have that uh, ability still. I didn't change any settings. It could just be me. Um, Natalie, are you able to share uh, my presentation? Yes. For some reason, yeah. Okay, great. Just one second. I had just discontinued sharing, and now it won't let me reshare. No worries. Give me one second, and I'll bring that up. Doctor Lorene, have you oh, um, been able to read the minutes Forgot from the last? few meetings? Yeah, specifically... Uh, not, from, not from the very last one. Right. Right, we realized that from the 14th. Uh, but but uh, we had uh, meetings on the tw September 27, September 30, October 4, where there were meetings ta uh, minutes taken and, and distributed. And if... Uh, if uh, you and Ingrid are in a position to move for approval, that would be great. If you're not, we'll, we'll deal with that uh, another way. And Nellie, am I able to gain control of the, the presentation? Uh, maybe. <laughs> uh, you can give that a shot. I can, I can certainly advance, uh, advance the slides if you just cue me up where to go. Okay. Um, if you could go to the minute slide, I believe it's page four. There you go. So, um, can we approve Monday, September 27 minutes? I can make that motion. Thank you. Dr. Levine, can you second that motion? He may have gone into the garage. Um, yeah. I think the uh, one that says September 30, uh, September 20 really is intended to say September 30. Yes, September 30, sorry. I can, I can make a motion to approve those as well. Thank you. Is, is Dr. Levine there at all? I can check it out. Okay. Um, Dr. Levine, we couldn't hear you. Did you uh, second the Monday, September 27th meeting? Anything in September? Um, yeah, I heard him second that. I heard him second both of them. Okay. And Monday, October 4th. Minutes. Uh, I think we should wait on those if we can. I would, I would wait on those. Okay, so for next me meeting, 
or um, are we able to approve those by email? No. Julie? No. Okay, no. Okay. Um, and Nellie, can we, can we move on to the next slide? So from the Department of Health, we received the following information, Mark, about what should be on the warning label. Dr. Levine, are you familiar with this already? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to guess, Mark, that Dr. Levine probably reviewed this before it left the Department of Health. Dr. Levine, is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Um, so, Dr. Levine, should we? Are you happy with the recommendation of the warning on language from the Department of Health? And can we have Inger and Dr. Levine vote on acceptance of the warning language from the Department of Health? Dr. Levine? Yeah, but I would, I would certainly want my other two subcommittee members to be able to weigh in because they, they do come from my department, so they're more independent of the department. Yes, Greg, uh, can you share um, your thoughts again about the warning language? Yeah, and so then on the bottom, we'll also include that you should not be operating driving that yeah so as this was written i thought it looked really solid i did think that it should have the added language about operation while impaired that we have spoken about or seen in previous meetings and then i had forgotten about the poison um, control phone number reference where would where would that stand gina underneath it it will say it is against the law to drive or operate machinery when under the influence of this product and national poison control center is 1-800-222-1222 it looks uh, it looks from at least the paper as it printed out on my computer that that is a uh, a separate sentence below the, the rest of the paragraph. Mm -hmm. It is a separate sentence. Okay. Ingrid. And then the only comment that Ingrid did make um, is to both that it may take, the effects of cannabis may be delayed by two hours or more. Yeah. Um, and perhaps, and Dr. Delevingne, I know Ingrid, you said maybe not have, this is a cannabis product and has not been analyzed or approved by the Food and Drug Administration, might be able to go lower um, in the paragraph than at the beginning. Again, it's just sort of a gut reaction that while that's important, I think what's more practical is that the effects of cannabis may be delayed um and so in my simple mind of how i look at this if that might be more effective if it's higher up or bold as gina mentioned ingrid are you okay with having this first sentence this is a cannabis product and has not been analyzed or approved by the fda am i do you like that further down I, I think that's a good sentence. I think we definitely need to include it. I guess I would be comfortable if we just emboldened or made the effects of cannabis being delayed, have that be bolder or um, somewhere where it's more catchy because that is, I think, really important information from a practical standpoint, um, even more so than whether or not the FDA has weighed in on this, so. Yeah, that's 
Dr. Levine, are you okay with just bolding that information? Um, yeah, I mean, you gotta you gotta start out by saying this is a cannabis product, so that's kind of stuck with that. So yeah. the way it is to bold the now that you know that's really meant for the edibles. The edibles. More yes. Than, more than any other form. Agreed. Dr. Levine, we did mention that earlier today that that specifically is for edibles. As, um, smoking would, would be immediate effects. Um, so uh, since we had you and Ingrid on the line, can we vote on the warning language from the Department of Health to accept those? That, Dr. Lu um, Ingrid, yes or no? Yes. Thank you. And Dr. Levine? Yeah, I don't, you know, I, I'm only seeing it through my, uh, my phone, so I, I'll take your word that it accurately represents all the track changes and everything else that were in the <laughs> original document. Um, uh, I can read that for you. This no, is no. a cat. Yeah, no, if, if it's true, if, if it's the same as what I'm seeing on my phone, that's fine. Okay. Again, I, I just want my other committee member to be able to weigh in because um, I don't I don't want it to look like the Department of Health sort of set set this up as the rule without having non Department of Health members be able to agree. Yeah, and this is a lot of the language that has been discussed by the subcommittee uh, during the Weeks. So I think this really coincides with what everybody would like with some additions from what we heard with Omar last week. And Ingrid did comment um, that, you know, she was in agreement with the FDA comment that Omar raised, which you have included in the warning labels, the, the warning language right now. Okay. You know, Gina, I, I think it still remains to be seen what their intention was with the uh, two hour delay uh, statement and whether that should be clarified. Well, if that is for edibles, Mark, because what? it can take two, it can take up to two hours to fill the FX if you have an edible. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, and, and that's really the only circumstance under which there would be that kind of delay that I'm aware of, but it it's just kind of hanging out there. As, as, well, it's included in it as a, uh, an overall uh, warning and may not be appropriate for a lot of cannabis products. I think because they're not going, they just want one set of warning language and not have it differ from each package, that, that that's why it's included and probably just be the best to include it all, then start subdividing between, okay, um, if this is a smokable product versus um, an edible product. I, Dr. Levine, is, is that your thoughts on that? It is, but I understand where Mark's coming from. I mean, one could say the effects of ingested, I suppose, is does the word ingested generally mean only something you would eat as opposed to breathe in or take it in another form? We could just say the effects of edible cannabis. Uh, yeah, true. Mm -hmm. Are you happy with making that revision, Dr. Levine? I just think so. Okay, Ingrid, um, what are your thoughts? Uh, I think I'm following. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay, so let's re-vote on this with the warning language. For, um, we will make in bold um, that the effects of cannabis may be delayed by two hours or more, but also changing that sentence to say the effects 
of edible cannabis may be delayed by two hours or more um, and have that in bold. Um, to vote yes or no, Ingrid? Yes. Thank you. And Dr. Levine? Yes. Wonderful. Um, can we just go on to the next slide, um, Nellie, please? Thank you. And um, the product packaging should have the required warnings and it should be capitalized in at least 10 points times the Roman elix or Ario. Um, keep out of reach of children. And if a cannabis product includes multiple servings, that should also be in the same 10 point font and voted. Ingrid? Um, can you please vote on that? Yes. Thank you. And Dr. Levine? Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nelly. Um, and that these are the acceptable warning signs that need to be included on a package. Um, so it will either have the white wash or the yellow. Um, depending on the package background because we want to make sure that there is no climate flourish. Um, the packaging and labeling needs to be 0.5 inches by 0.5. And then the edible products have at least 25% of the serving height and width, but not less than 0.25 by 0.25. Um, and the required colors are the yellow and the black with the red rim around it, or white in the center with red around it um, and black lettering. And that it cannot be recreated, modified at all. It shouldn't be stretched or distorted. You cannot use um, less than the measurements indicated, and you cannot change the colors or include it on a dark packaging. Ingrid, um, please vote. Yes. Thank you. And Dr. Levine? Yes. Thank you. So we have finished that um, portion out. And I know that Julie had um, some messaging. And um, Julie, just one of the questions is that we still have um, two minutes that would need to be approved, but as of right now, we have concluded all the material work for the subcommittee. So how, how what are our next steps forward? Um, is there one other um, discussion item about the um, oversight for edibles production? Yeah, yes, about whether we would accept the, the uh, recommendation that uh, edibles would be uh, overseen by the Department of Health, Vermont Department of Health. Is that what you're talking about, Julie? Yes. Yeah. So that that is a decision that needs to be addressed as well. Ingrid, what are your thoughts about that? Are you okay with that oversight? Yeah, I I am. Okay. Um, Dr. Levine. Dr. Levine, are you there? Um, Julie, maybe you can give us um, the step forward while we wait for Dr. Levine sure. to Sure, and go. we maybe, you know, if we need to, perhaps we'll have to do one, maybe a shorter meeting on Thursday to address this and then approve the other two. Uh, sets of meeting minutes but so my statement was just that to, as a reminder that this is not sort of the last step in the process it's the first so the recommendations that are coming from this subcommittee will now go to the the ccb and we'll begin drafting our rules um, so that we'll come back to um, some advisory full advisory committee meetings when we have some substantive information to share um, i don't think we've scheduled those dates yet but i i know that is part of our plan and then once we do uh, uh, draft our rules, there's you know additional public comment time 
within the rulemaking process. So in terms of you know making sure that we're getting some input from those who are not in the Department of Public Health and getting input from the greater um, you know, members of the public, there's, there's still lots of opportunity for that. Thank you, Julie. Dr. Levine, are you on the line? Dr. Levine? Okay. Well, we will have a call on Thursday to discuss the oversight on manufacturing of edibles to the Department of Health and to approve the minutes um, two previous minutes and today's minutes. Okay. Uh, are you okay with that, Ingrid? It'll, it'll be a short and it, we should schedule about a half an hour. Sounds good with that. Uh, okay, great. And then you don't have to move to adjourn right now. You can just call adjournment. Okay, it, are there any other public comments that would someone like to do public comment before we leave? Other public comments? No? All right, good. I think that's it. Well, thank you so much. Meetings are adjourned. Thank you. See you right. Thursday. Thanks, everybody.